Okay, if you want to be kept, if you want a man that's taking care of you, you know what I'm saying? You just, you got to, you could go like this, but you better not turn all the way around and and proceed to, you just, you just can't do that. That's for his eyes only. Y'all know me and Insecure around here. I don't know why y'all try to act like you should be stronger than that. You, you should be secure. They're not. They're not. They're not built like us. They can run a train on home. We'll be like, baby, come on in here. Come get your pork chop, get your uh, rice and gravy and green beans and stuff like that. I understand. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you got that check in here with you, too. <laughs> us? What? One? One? Oh, you got to go. They throwing all our shit out the door. All our shit, they can't take it. They can't take it. We can't take it. Let us know how the sound is, okay? Let us know how the video quality is. Y'all better be liking this video. Boy, 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 do we have a lot of wine to spill today. Now listen, if you are easily offended and you're new here, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to this man. I'm sorry to you, okay? If you're sensitive, if you have certain alliances with, with certain celebrities and you are a stan, Stay and stand. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. We have stands too here. They're called winos, okay? <laughs> and if you want to go back and forth with them, be as it may. Be as it may, okay? But the winos always win. <laughs> always. Now, um, who we got, Jasmine? Let me see what we got for this, for this show. And then we got that other show. Okay? The other show. Okay, so for this show, we got Alexis Sky, Kim and Croy, Nene Leakes, Monique Samuels, Britney Spears, because I'm just shocked. Somebody slapped her and ain't nobody do nothing. Okay. Nelly and Ashanti. Rocky Bibbins out in Vegas and won't leave it in Vegas. I said, what is up with all this Vegas footage leaking? It's supposed to be, and these days they uploading the footage themselves. I said, Kiki, what are you doing? Why? Did we, I was out there, I didn't upload nothing. <laughs> okay, Beyonce. And I got a message from Miss Tina Knowles. We're going to say that for last, okay? Like I said, if you are here to stand, we welcome you, okay? But don't, don't get mad when we sing you back home, bruised up, beat up. And you're gonna try to come out here and start again, okay? I don't talk, get out my yard with that mess there. Okay? You come into my house wondering what I'm cooking, what my furniture look like, trying to sit on my furniture and I don't know where your behind done been, trying to put your hands in my pots, telling me how to run my household. Okay? I'm going to put you out my house. Now, I know I ain't supposed to come for no grandmamas, but since I don't reach the age of 40, I'm technically, if I had my child 
at 16, I could be a grandmama. So we are doing grandmama to grandmama today. And if I need to get Lynette here on this here line for Miss Tina Knowles, I do that too. But I told her, I got this, mama, I got this, okay? And if she want to send Beyonce down here, you know what I'm saying, to get that other foot broke, she can send her too. Because I am going to leave my Yelp review. I am going to contact the BBC, Better Business Bureau, when I see that there's a problem with my here purchase. I don't care if it's free or not. If you, you give me something free, if, you if I buy it, either way, you are supposed to give a certain level of customer service. And I'm sorry, we live in the United States of America where customer service is favored over everything. I want to introduce my co-host, Teddy. Say hey, Teddy. And I gotta, I gotta introduce my other, she's a co-host by now. Jazzy Faye, production zoo, my nizzle, okay? We'll tell her to tell y'all what's up later. Now, before we get started, all right, remember, right after this live, I don't know what time this is gonna end, we're gonna head over to TashaKLive.com and we're gonna, we're gonna spill that bucket wine, okay? The bucket barrel wine, the Shea Johnson wine. Also gonna be talking about Kiki and her baby daddy, Steve Harvey and Marjorie Harvey, cause everything that glitters is coal. All right, I got, I got, woo -hoo, the wine I got on them. I said, ooh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna tap it a little bit. I'm gonna see, you know, I'm gonna see how far. I, Marjorie done had me blocked since 2018. But miraculously, she know what I got going on over here. I said, what, what are you doing? What are you doing over here still? Thought you had me, but unblock me unblock me okay and we got a lot lot more all right a lot lot more that's going to be up on tasha k uh, after this show so if you you like to subscribe we would love to have you over there it is very uncensored and like i said if you have feelings um it's not the place for you okay but if you ain't got no feelings and you're just a neutral party hey hey come on in come on in it's white blacks hispanics asians everybody is invited to the party okay all right, now, uh, before we get started, we got some sponsors that we need to brag about, which means, now, hold on, hold on, hold on, because this, this, this is so, like, listen, some of y'all probably have seen this, okay? Just a few of y'all, not many. But to the rest of the world that is about to see this, I do want to put out viewer discretion. Now, hold on, that's not a good intro. It's not, it's not strong enough. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me start over because you about to see something that's go, that you about to see something that's going to, it may make you a little uncomfortable, and that's okay. I make a lot of people uncomfortable every day. And I told you a lot of people think they know me out here. A lot of people think they got me in the bag. They, 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 they can predict me. No, you cannot. And here's what I'm gonna say. Mr. Uh, Pissy Pied Piper been out here on the internet stroll, talking mad about me for the last two years. Now, I get it. He mad that he behind bars and I'm out. I get it. He feels that I should be in there, too. I didn't touch no legales. I didn't pee on no legales. I didn't marry no legales. Okay? Talking about legales and peeing on legales is two different situations. We are not the same. And so therefore, when I saw him do interview, after interview, after interview, asking the Department of Justice to lock me up for receiving his commissary records and his private communication that I didn't ask for, I didn't solicit for, but the officers down there thought that they would be useful for our work that we were doing in the African-American community for our little girls, even when their mammas and daddies didn't give a damn about them. And so, ma'am, sir, you got bigger problems than me to worry about. Like that foot that they likely gonna amputate from them diabetes you got going on there, okay? You mad you ain't receiving proper medical care? Who cares? Them little girls that you had locked up with them sweatsuits on didn't receive proper medical care. They was cheering. I 
don't care if they mama gave them to you. Send them down there in a McDonald's bag. I don't care if she sold them to you from the dollar menu. You should have found somebody else to play with. And for that reason now, you gonna leave me alone. Let's go. Robert, time to go. It's us against the world, you know that, right? <clears throat> and I, I need y'all to prove your loyalty to me. Everybody has left me, took my money, and now y'all all I got. <clears throat> and so I'm gonna need you to prove your loyalty to me. Will you prove your loyalty to me? Yeah? Okay. <clears throat> when you eat this, you belong to me. at 8 p.m. I better see the winos at the Flamingo Bar Theater. Grab your tickets, doors open at 6.30 p.m. and seats are first come first serve within your ticket tier. And if you think I cut up on this here internet, you ain't ready for the shit that's about to go down live on stage. 
scan the QR code or get your tickets using the link below. The Winos are toasting up in Miami. Purchase now. me out here. I can't twerk. Shake say I, I, I better not try to pull no kiki, no wee-wee, no knee-knee, nowhere. Scan the QR code. Get your tickets. We only got a couple hundred left. Get your flights later, but make sure you secure them tickets first so you can come on down here and get this wine. All right, let's go on and get started. Alexis Sky, let me switch mics. You know, I say this mic for the seven, for the, for the after show, okay? This is what this one is for. Tell our cat to leave me alone now. So the next time he do a front prison interview, I'm going to do another one on his foot getting chopped off. Keep playing from them diabetes. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't see enough likes. That is, y'all are so disrespectful. Just so disrespectful. Okay. Now, listen, y'all y'all know how I feel about this whole coach out here. Okay. And, you know, it, it, it eventually takes a toll on your body. And we've seen it happen with Alexis Scott. I think the birth of a baby and the, the defects and things that had happened with the baby and stuff like that. And then, you know, uh, the right baby daddy uh, didn't fit the par, so she had to blame the baby daddy on somebody else. And finally she just accepted the little car salesman baby daddy that she did have. Took him down there to Jamal Bryant to, to see if Jamal Bryant could bless him. I mean, it was a lot of stuff going on. And the BBL was just overstuffed. She couldn't fit no more in there. Until one day she had one last, sur well, she had a surgery. It wasn't the last surgery, okay? She, did, she thought it. She didn't know at the time it was going to be her last surgery, okay? But God said that it was, okay? And, uh... This surgery apparently was pretty complicated for her. And not only was it pretty complicated for her, she had to pray and ask uh, God that if you got me through this surgery, I will change my life. Okay, just one last BBL for the team. One last one. And so she made it through. God brought her through. And she here now. She's a born-again Christian. I don't care who, what it is, what you do, whatever spiritually centers you, whatever makes you a better person, so be it. Now, I know a lot of people expect them to just change overnight when the, when the pastor asks you. When he put on that music, I need some music. I got to create me some music because I'm going to ask them, you know, I'm going to start asking people to give their life over to the wino. <laughs> if you want to be a wino and the spirit is calling you to be a wino, Please come forward <laughs> at the end of every show. I'm going to do that. Yeah. If you were here and it's your first time here, your neighbor brought you today, and you liked what you saw here at this here show, uh, and if you want to give your life over to the, to the wine, please step forward and become a wino, okay? We baptized you in the name of the wine. Yes, we did. Jesus drank wine. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Now, I know a lot of people expect her to be you know, perfect right after she got baptized, okay? And that's not the case. That's not the case. Nobody is perfect. It takes a while to, you know, undo everything she's been doing for 30-plus years. You know, it's not going to happen overnight, so I understood the mistakes there. But I also said this, you know what I'm saying? I drag them when they're already on the ground. I'm going to drag you. I'm going I'm to I'm keep you down there by your little ponytail, by your little lace front. You better hope that scalp can hold it. You better hope that scalp is hold, because if not, you're going to be down there with Razor Chick of Atlanta, and she's going to be doing that comb over, because you're going to have hair in the back, no hair in the front, and she's going to comb it to the front, make you think that she done saved your hair, even though you got permanent alopecia. But as soon as you walk outside, when that wind hit, it goes back. 
Then you back to wearing lace fronts and you done paid this lady fifteen to uh, fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars to make you feel like you done went natural, but she done relaxed, damaged hair. Allegedly. Nah. I'm sorry, I got off track there. I, I got off track. I'm just like, yeah, I've been watching the Razor Chick of Atlanta videos for years, and I'm like, hey, people ain't figured out what she's doing. You, ma'am, that's a whole ball spot. She doing the same thing them white men be doing when they got ball spots, and they don't want to let the rest of their hair go, so they comb it right over. She doing the same thing down here. I think it's in Atlanta. I thought it was in a good state of Florida, but it's not apparently it's in Atlanta, okay? But shout out to Razor Chick of Atlanta, okay? She done changed a lot of women's lives, okay? I just ain't seen no repeat customers. But listen. Back to the, the subject at hand. I'm sorry, I got, I got a little sidetracked when I said dragging up out of hell. But um, she has since enrolled in esthetician school. Yes, she did. She is down there, I think, in Atlanta at Elaine Sterling. I think that's the name. I know a lot of little girls went down there to that school, and they are promising estheticians now. And I think if anybody, you know what I'm saying, should be in aesthetics, you know what I'm saying, because she don't have bad skin. You know, her eyebrows and stuff be cute. Her makeup be cute and natural and stuff like that. Her lashes be cute. They don't be overdone. Her skin looks good. You know, I think it should be Alexis Scott. And I'm proud to see her move into a real entrepreneur and leaving these no good hood. Oh, I'm buying vagina just for this one session leaving you with a baby to go get Medicaid on until I get up at the car dealership. Men alone, okay? This is what I like to see. I love it. Just like Black China making her transition, I love it. And when Suki Yana makes hers from special ed on down to the clothing boutique, I am going to praise her too. So we're going to show Alexis Scott some love, and y'all going to head over to her page, head over and follow her so when she get ready to do them brows and lashes, okay, and things that y'all like down there in Atlanta, laser hair removal, Brazilian, you get it done by someone who knows it best. There's nothing that she hasn't have done. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, you go, girl. You get your money the legal way. She done closed her legs and opened up business doors. Moving on. Off the whole stroke. Speaking of off the whole stroke, Kim realized there was no more strolling for her to do. Now, after calling the police on her baby daddy and, and leaving him with $3 million worth of taxes and stuff like that and, and taking all the wigs out so he couldn't sell them and trying to move her furniture out and, and putting in her bio, she, she finding that she trying to look for another big daddy. Nobody bought, not one person bought that OnlyFans. Big Papa said, you too old. I got somebody 15 years younger than you. She went, they, she was just uh, seen down at uh, World Changes in Atlanta with Croy trying to work things out with the children because she realized yesterday's price for that vagina is not today's price. No, it's not. No, it's not. And so she carried her and them heavy ass wigs back to the house with Croy. And they gonna work it out and they gonna get through this with prayer. Now y'all keep them and them children in prayer because they are stronger together, weaker separate. Stronger together, weaker separate. Just like she figured out that her vagina was weak when nobody answered the ad that she put on her social media. Stronger, too, for Bravo's ratings when she go ahead and get this check, and then she going to fall out with his ass again for ratings, and he going to stay because he love her. <laughs> there was this, I think that was this little thing I shared in the group, right? Because, you know, there's this, this joke around here. I'm crazy. Check, check calm, right? What you laughing for, Jasmine? What you laughing for? Okay, yeah. So they say I'm crazy and check calm. And so I shared this little meme to the group. And apparently, I think we talked about this before. 
um, men are happier with emotionally unstable women. And they have the best sex, so says statistics, okay? And so this particular, uh, <clears throat> so we got a little group, group chat and stuff like that. This particular uh, uh, thing, it says the happiest married couples are usually a combination of, hold on, let me wait for it, a calm husband and a dramatic wife, okay? So when you see these quiet husbands, these calm husbands, and they got these women that's just off the chain, that just lives for every bit of drama, as soon as the, she leave the house quiet, they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. When she down there trying to get real, why are you always fussing? Why are you always begging? Why are you always need, 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 need? I done took the trash. I done did this. I done did it. Can I please watch my game in peace? But as soon as she take, as soon as she take a girl's trip to Vegas, he said, he calling every hour on the hour, what you doing, FaceTiming and everything like that, sizing up your outfit, telling you what colors to wear, to go on down there to the Usher residency and everything. And as soon as you get down there, he did not expect Usher to be feeling on your ass and he wants you back at this house right now. <clears throat> and Cross family has been trying to tell him, leave this lady alone. Leave this woman alone. Your problems with her? Do not outweigh, listen, outweigh them wigs that she got going on. They heavy. Everything is just heavy. It's too much for you. But I'm, I'm with this. It's a family. They got too many children to be splitting up. Two different households. It's more expensive. Georgia, state, and federal taxes. Trust me, I know I owe them both. Okay? It ain't cheap down there. And I'm glad that they decided to meet at church, even though she had a mini skirt on when she went into World Changers. She had on a blue dress. It was a skin tight dress, it was a mini dress, and she walked into church with her ass out, hand in hand, with some cowboy boots on and a heavy wig to save her marriage. Cause she realized that this was it. This was it. Once her neck had started sinking in and the white woman started coming out, nobody wasn't buying that. They want full necks. These old men want full necks. Because when you gotta give them neck, they don't wanna see their stuff coming out the side because of the thinness of the skin that's happening because of your age. Moving on. She irritates me bad. I just think she never took the time to mourn, to grieve. And she's been grieving before our eyes, you know. I feel like if Greg was still here, a lot of decisions that was made on her behalf wouldn't be, be made. So I'm going to give her a pass. You know, she missed having a husband, so she went and got somebody else's husband. Was it the best decision? It wasn't. But she thought it would fill that void of what it felt like to be married. So why not steal someone that was already married, that was already in it, and could just easily make the transition over to being, to playing marriage with her? She would pay for everything. All he had to do was play marriage. Be a daddy to, the, to her grown-ass kids. Just don't touch on them because they're older. You know, just, it was a lot of stuff. I just, I've been seeing this train wreck, and I'm just like, you know, I felt like, you know, when she was losing Greg, she was losing her mind, and I felt like she was just fumbling a lot of bags because of misplaced anger. Now, I'm showing her some grace here. And so you don't you don't try to sue these people. They they tried to work out with you. Like, hey, we don't want you to lead a show. They 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 suspended you. You thought you was too big to we don't care how tall you are, Amazon. We don't care how big you are. What's John and the Beanstalk? Well, what's the name? John and the Beanstalk. It's a giant and the beanstalk. Yeah. We don't care how big you are. Anything, but for her to come out here after she done drug Bravo and she seen them erase her legacy, that had to sting. The ego is a powerful thing. And you realize that you couldn't get out here and do what they did for you. You were the highest paid housewife. And you let candy? Candy! 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 Take your 
little chap? In the world is a soldier boy candy? That's got to... How could you, Nene? Why you let a bag like that fumble? Now you let Candy come take your check. We've been trying to get rid of her and it just don't work. She the last OG standing. We need Phaedra. We need you. We need Portia. And Marlo. I don't care what y'all say about Marlo. I know y'all don't like her. But Marlo right now is giving the energy that we need. She got smoke for all of them. And I, I, I ain't gonna lie, I like, I'm, I'm, I'm messy like that. That's why I ain't got no friends now, because I'm a show girl. You know, as soon as you left, old girl said that, I, and I be talking about you right with her. But I'm gonna tell you what she said. And then I'm gonna sit back, sip my wine, and watch y'all fight. <laughs> and then they be like, girl, how did she find out about, she just asked me. She just asked me, you know, I don't believe in that line. So, you know, I told her the truth, and I told her she had a problem. She needed to check you about it, and she did. That's me all day. I'm, I feel, <laughs> I like Marlo. She real about her thing, you know what I'm saying? Marlo know her ovaries don't work. She don't care. She ain't got nothing to lose. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to gain or grow either. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I like it. You need somebody that just don't care. You know? That's the cast that we need now. I don't know where they're getting these little IG girls from. You know? I know Drew is trying, but it's just not giving. I don't know who the other lady is. <sighs> Cynthia, she was a mute. Peter was the one that sold that show. He was flaming and just. Reading everybody for Miss Cynthia. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Mm-hmm. But now Nene to reveal if she's open to returning to the Real House Laws of Atlanta. And after they erased her history and everybody was up in arms, I think she felt that and realized that, that I think I just opened my mouth a little too bad. See, you got to pick and choose your battles. You really do. You can't, you can't go after the bag and not have a replacement bag. You got to always have a replacement bag. If you're going to you risk it all, make sure you got something under the floorboard of the house. But you don't let that married man come take your little money. About to let Peter take it to pay that restaurant uh, a lease that he owed 500000 Keep going down there to bar one. He's going to put $500,000 on your check. You ain't gonna know. You're gonna take your little credit card. Now, um, the return to Real Housewives of Atlanta is something that fans have always been waiting for. And in a new interview, the TV personality was asked if she was open to returning to Bravo's reality TV series after her exit in 2020. And she said, yes. She said, I would. I would definitely be open to it, okay? She said, the fans are the ones that love me. They're the ones that love to see me in that position, and I will do anything for them, she told the paparazzi. And I think that's what it boils down to it is because, Nene, you forgot your fans. Two million followers on Instagram ain't no fans. You done tried the comedy thing. That didn't work. You tried, uh, um, you tried linking with the LGBTQ to give them a show in that dark-ass restaurant that you got, that didn't work. You tried television, they blackballed you. And then you, you don't have the confidant that you had that had your best interest at heart, Greg, because instead of you grieving, you replaced him, which I understand it's hard to lose somebody like that, so you just want that void fill, you know, filled. And no one has your best interest at heart. And once you get rid of the married man, I mean, she's still with him on and off. You know what I'm saying? He divorced now. Now she don't want him. I don't know why women only want other people's men. The man was fully married, devoted to his wife, gave the wife up for you. Now he done gave the wife up. You don't want him no more. He should have stayed home. See what I mean? You done left 23 years. For a year in a lawsuit, come on. Gots to be more careful. Hold on, gots to 
to be more careful. Oh, shit. And I just realized, you know, she just got too big. And hopefully Andy, you know, will, will you know, see to it that there's at least some type of reunion with the OG housewives. I would love to see Phaedra. I would love to see Portia. I would love to see, you know what I'm saying, Cynthia. I would love to see, uh, who else, Kendra and her, you know, and Candy. You know, all come together for the sake of the fans. Now that would be some ratings. That would be some ratings, okay? I think everybody should just put their feelings aside, consider what the fans want, and let's get this money. Let's get this fucking money. I wish you the best, Nene. I hope now that you, the dick done left the life you can think now. Because I'm telling you, it blinds a lot of people now. Vagina do it too. Okay. Mm-mm-mm. And another one. Real Housewives, uh, this is Potomac, right? Uh, Monique, we did talk to her a couple times. I know, she's not on there no more. Every time these housewives introduce their husbands to the show, it's only a matter of time before the divorce is coming down. So either, either they already had problems before they get a television, because I just don't see what real grounded man would be okay with opening up his entire family to scrutiny all in the name of one check per episode. Hell, they was paying Latoya forever, $1,000 an episode. They don't pay these up and coming new housewives that kind of money. They offer them the platform to be able to expand and expand on their business, but Nene Leakes should serve as, you know, a focus group for them all, and Portia. Them sheets is not given what Simon is given with blood money. Okay? And fish grease. Let's hear what she got to say because they're now divorcing. Are we surprised? No. Let's go. Chris and I are going through a divorce. I was not planning on sharing this information until it was. What's wrong with the video? Start it over. And when we felt like we got to a point where it was like, okay, oh. we pretty much are on the same page with moving forward with things. Um, I did go to the courthouse and file. Um, so a lot of information that was like put out there, it was put out there. Number one, while I was on vacation, I was on a meditation retreat in Costa Rica. So I was at, I was in Costa Rica, minding my own black business. And, um, I was on a meditation retreat. So, you know, whether you're the person who seeks the divorce or the person that was asked for the divorce um, by the other person, either way, the process is very stressful. It's like um, it's like going through a death, you know, in so many ways. Uh, Chris and I have been together for 17 years. We've been married for 11 years. Um, yeah, somebody said at the reunion, many. So y'all talking about Love and Marriage DC. Um, the reunion that many people believe the reason you did the show was to set up a divorce to Chris. You both laughed. Yet here you are. I hope you both find peace. Yeah, so just because we were going through it last year, which we were. Last year was very rough. When we were going through our motions and we were trying to figure things out, the goal was not to get divorced. That wasn't where we were last year. Like even when people said last year that we were um, going our separate ways and all of that, Chris and I were trying every which way to figure out like how do we get that connection back? How do we bring it back together? And um, so even at that time, it wasn't true. Like we weren't seeking a divorce. We weren't even, we were separated in a sense of like, okay, you focus on you, I focus on me and let's see what happens. So we have been going through this process and it's been years, you know, like marriage, as many people know, it has its ups and downs, but you get to a point where you feel like you've reached that, that moment of like, you know what, is, are we growing? You know, is, is, are we stagnant? Are we moving? Like what's going on? And then you also have to consider the fact that we have three children, you know, who are watching us. Our actions and how we interact with each other, how we run our household, that is literally an example for our children of how they're going to live their life, you know? And I don't want 
our children to ever be in a relationship where they feel like they're not being heard, whether that's on my side or Chris's side, you know, talking at each other, like the marriage becomes like a battlefield. Um, so you get to a point where you also have to consider the fact that we have three little people that are literally looking at us and they're taking notes and they're like, okay, this is what's normal and it's not normal. So, um, so yeah, so that's where we are. Um, you guys don't have to be sorry. Um, it's just a part of life. Unfortunately, sometimes it happens. Some people stay married forever. Um, some people don't. My parents were married for 23 years and got divorced. Um, I know couples that have been married for 60 years and they're miserable and they literally let their whole life just fade away, <laughs> you know? So, um, it's really what you make it. And if you get to a point where you're like, you know what, we have grown so far apart that it may be best that we focus on ourselves individually and then focus on the three important people in our lives, which is, which is our children. And that's what we decided to do. The reason, let me say this. And, and, and listen, if you don't take nothing, I know I, I bust a lot of jokes over here. I really do. You know, wine gossip comedy. Wine gossip comedy, that's the new brand. That's the brand. It's always been the brand. But, you know, it took years for me to figure out because I literally grew up before y'all. You know, if you saw the first video of my, you know, from my bedroom, you know what I'm saying, to here, you're going to see I grew up with you guys. You guys, you guys helped form the brand, and I brought it together, and now we know what it is. We know what the mission is. We know what the, the, the purpose is and everything, right? If you don't take nothing that I say, take this, okay? Now, I know people think it's cool and it's cute to do these reality shows and to be on television. They have these brands. They want to expand these brands. They want their businesses to get more popularity. They open up restaurants. They do a lot with it. I think if, if anybody, Candy has leveraged reality TV better than any other housewife, okay? And, and has avoided federal jail time and everything. She's the only one doing everything legally besides the people that are frequenting her establishments, shooting inside her establishments, okay, over fish and grits. Now, when you see these couples that have been together for this long, they survived this long because it was just them. It was just them. And this is why I don't ever think that I... I it's not even me. It's it's Sheck that we would ever probably be open to a reality show. If it's gonna be a reality show, it'll be me. It won't be anything to do with him because the reason him and I have survived for so long, we celebrate 17 years of marriage. What's the day? Monday. <clears throat> Monday. Give us our flowers. <laughs> We celebrate 17 years, been together 18 years, Monday. And you know what's so sweet about this Monday coming up? And no, our marriage is not perfect. Absolutely not. Right? And I'm going to tell you why. So people won't be like, oh, you always say your marriage is not. No, my marriage, hell no, nah, my marriage ain't perfect. <laughs> Absolutely not. I just got checked the other day by him in the restaurant. I was like, well, damn, I'm sorry. You know? But. Is that we we met on a Monday, we went on our first date on a Monday, we got married on a Monday, and now here 18 years, and we used to we used to celebrate our anniversary every week. You know how Jackie get married every year? We used to celebrate our anniversary every single Monday. That was our date night. Most people had date nights on Monday to the kids came. When the kids came, that went out the window, okay? And so now for this to fall on a Monday, it's really special to us, you know? And so but we, we, the reason we survived so long, because, you know, he comes, we come from two opposite ends of the world. He comes from a very, very conservative family and things like that. Um, yes, my family's conservative, but we country. You know, yeah, we believe in marriage and stuff like that and stuff, but we just a little bit more dramatic than his family. And so, and we had opposite ends, very different lifestyles coming together. And everybody was against us when we decided to get married. You know, his family didn't want that. My family was saying, throw salt around the door when he came in because he would bring a voodoo in the house. It was a shit show. It was a shit show. I was just like, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. We just couldn't even have a wedding. We just went to the courthouse because it was like, I'm not having a wedding inviting them. 
My brothers and them laughing at what your daddy, your daddy talking about why his daddy got on a dress. It was a, it was a Muslim gown. It wasn't no dress. It was just, no, it was a lie. But one thing we realized is when we didn't allow them to penetrate us, and so it brought us closer together, and from that moment on, we decided to keep everything that's going on in our marriage to ourselves. We don't involve people in what our marital disputes are, okay? Now, people may see us arguing over why you leave the AC on, stuff like that, but when it comes to those real issues, not even our kids are involved in that at all. Like, we don't bring them in that. We don't even argue around our kids like that. I mean, they'll see us argue, but they won't, they ain't gonna see us abusing, emotionally abusing. We don't do that anyway, you know what I'm saying? So, but what I'm saying is, but when you have something like this that you supposedly respect and you protect, and y'all was married before the, uh, before the reality show came in, my thing is, the reason y'all are divorcing now is because you let how many people view the show? Millions of people into your relationship. Millions of people now have say-so of what goes on into that relationship because it's a real housewife. And they got in it, and it's theirs now. He feels like he don't have no control over his household as a man. And so instead, now we got to let it go because what was once ours is no longer ours no more. And the reason I can say that is because Monique, woman to woman, wife to wife, mama to mama, we the same age. Well, I may be older than you. Why are you on the internet explaining why you getting a divorce? Why is it anybody's business? Why is it anybody's business that you was in Costa Rica trying to center yourself and you come back on the internet to receive the very energy which caused you to get a divorce in the first place? You don't need no explanation to us. Your only explanation go to him and no sharing. But because you are not married to television and to the internet and to everybody's opinions, this is why your family has failed. And it ain't about keeping no man. It ain't about keeping no man. But when you got children, it's bigger. It's bigger than what you want. It's bigger than what the fans got to say because everybody knows when them children start going through that divorce, it does something to them. So why you thinking you don't want the kids to see you unhappy? Children don't give a damn as long as y'all together. They want mama and daddy together. They don't care if y'all fight to the wheels, fall off. My mom and daddy together. Because that's a part of life. And ain't nobody telling you to be unhappy, but how can you be happy with someone when every single comment is, lead at him, he ain't this, he ain't that. How you let him talk to you like that? I saw the episode, he said this, look how he was doing, he got his habit, he got this, he got that. And you constantly implanting that into the back of your mind. And then it affects the energy and the bond y'all once had. And then this man is like, how did I let this happen to my household? So I'm sure he feels like a failure. And you on the internet, running to the internet like they're going to save you, child. They ain't saving you. Ask NeNe. Ask NeNe Leaks. Now, I'm not saying stay somewhere where you ain't happy, but it ain't nobody's business at this point, especially if you're not on reality TV no more. So why are you still giving us reality? You're not getting no check for it. So what's the pro Why are you here? Why are you here? But you know what? That's above the butt eaters. If this conversation is above the butt eaters, okay? Jasmine, what's coming up next? We got a sponsor we need to brag about, which means boldly raise a glass too. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, share this video after the break, okay? We got Britney Spears, Nelly and Ashanti, Rocky, Bivens, and Latasha Scott, as well as Beyonce and her mama. And then we're going to head over to TashaKLive.com for that bucket Shay Johnson real wide on why she ain't announced that baby daddy, okay? Let's go. Robert, time to go.
morning and the night between my two girls wakes me stretching and yawning they say the feds are here to get me and aging yells robert kelly from my living room they're here to arrest me for making my girls he do do now i've got this dumb look on my face like what have i done how could i been so stupid for fucking with these young ones must have lost track of time oh what was on my mind from mcdonald's to her school didn't plan to stay with you here i am quickly trying to hide all these videotapes searching for that Aaliyah tape trying to hide these pissy clothes in the fence with my hands behind me said you're not gonna get away I looked at her like she was crazy. I said, Agent, move out my way. Said I'm the biggest artist. She said, well, you got a trafficking case. Shh, shh, Azrael, you better not say a goddamn thing. Don't you make a sound or some shit is going down. I said, can I see the warrant? Yes, except for one thing you can't read. Shit, think, shit, think, shit. Call my lawyer. Now I'm in the darkest closet. And I'm trying to figure out how to get my boyfriend out before Tasha K finds out. Then my boyfriend yells, baby, what's going on? He says, honey, I'm in the room. Said I've been missing you. So the cops all over me. I pushed and ran out bed. The bed walks in the bathroom and opens up cabinet door. She says, Agent, hey, come look at this. He said, what's It's just us against the world, you know that, right? <clears throat> and I, I need y'all to prove your loyalty to me. Everybody has left me, took my money, and now y'all all I got. <clears throat> and so I'm gonna need you to prove your loyalty to me. Will you prove your loyalty to me? Yeah? Okay. <clears throat> when you eat this, you belong to me. Plus a lot more wine spill live with me on Wine with Tasha K on stage in Miami on October 20th, 2023 at 8 p.m. I better see the winos at the Flamingo Bar Theater. Grab your tickets, doors open at 6.30 p.m. and seats are first come first served within your ticket tier. And if you think I cut up on this here internet, you ain't ready for the shit that's about to go down live on stage. Scan the QR code or get your tickets using the link below. The winos are toasting up in Miami. Purchase now. <laughs> we back. We back. We back. We back. <laughs> Jazz, whenever, let me get Jazz a little pep talk real quick. You know, I wanted to be a DJ in my past life. Whenever we come back, when that commercial ends, boom, that beat drop. You feel me? Don't wait, you got a boom, it's the energy. You know what I'm saying? Get in your energy, I need a microphone on you like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jazzy favorite, that shizzle my nizzle. Yes, don't forget to get your tickets, there's only a couple hundred left for Miami skits like these and much more. Tasha K on stage, shutting down Miami on the water. Nobody's safe, not even your grandmama, Miss Knowles. <laughs> Okay. All right. So uh, I believe the the moderators are gonna be.
gonna be dropping the link so that you can purchase your tickets. Get your tickets now. Worry about your flights later, okay? Don't don't worry about it. It's always cheap to fly to Miami, okay? So just go ahead and secure your tickets before they sold out and they go. Uh and could you make sure the link is in the uh description? Because it's not for none of the shows. It is? Okay. So the link is also in the description box as well. Cause somebody emailed me. So I don't really, I can't find the link. I was like, okay. All right. Sorry, we're gonna fix that. All right. So hit the one. I, I wanna see, I wanna see who all coming so far, who all got their tickets. Say, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Just write MIA if you coming. MIA if you coming. Let me see the chat. MIA before we move on real quick. Okay? Don't forget, after this live, we're gonna head over to TashaKlive.com. TashaKlive.com. You go to the website, you subscribe. We got some Bucket Wine, we got some Steve Harvey Wine, we got some Kiki Palmer Wine, we got a lot going on. Over there, uncensored, unfiltered, I can cuss. I can be myself. I can sit on the porch. I can tell the neighbor, you know, that's what we're doing, okay? I love you guys. Y'all say that all the time. Y'all say all the time, this is the best episode ever. You know, we work hard for this show. I know when Bondi came through, <clears throat> Bondi Blue, shout out to Bondi Blue, y'all. Y'all better be following my sis, okay? She doing her thing over there. Bondi is a grown woman. I said, I got to have grown women sitting in this chair. That's it. Grown women who done been through some things. I see the Miami. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all better write Miami because it's on the water. Yes, sweet. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, no, we doing Kiki over there. Okay. So, what was I going to say? I got a little excited. What was I saying? I forgot. No, what the hell was I saying? Damn, I'm hungry too. <laughs> I ain't had nothing to eat, but I, I actually perform better when I ain't got no food on my stomach. So, you know what I'm saying? Then I go, I go bust down a steak, something. I need some protein, okay? Uh, but yeah, we're gonna be heading over to TashaKLive.com uh, right after this. So you subscribe via TashaKLive.com, then you can stream it you know, everywhere, okay? And so um, I can't wait to see y'all over there when we done, all right? Now, Britney Spears. Now, I just didn't believe this when I heard this, that somebody slapped the sh out of Britney and made her do this when they slapped her. And nobody did anything. I said, ain't no way they slapped the Britney Spears. The Britney Spears, and nobody did, not even her husband. Her husband is supposed to be her protector now. He's supposed to be her, her guard dog, and he let these people slap his wife and ain't did nothing. And I, Okay. Now, let me read what they talking about. Let me read what they talking about. Hold on for a second. Let me see, because I, I want to see the lies that they done made up. <laughs> I really do. I want to see the lies that they made up. So Britney Spears, where's it at? Okay. Now, apparently, now she released a statement. We do have a video of the slap, don't we? Okay, let's see it. To the catch restaurant. That's when she leaned in, sort of got her way into uh, the circle and started to put her hand on his uh, back shoulder or his back. Because he's pretty tall, so towards his back. And then that's when... Uh, the bodyguard just turned around, uh, slapped her across the face, and knocked off her sunglasses. Did you see his hand make contact with her face? Yeah, you, you saw the hand, but uh, you also heard the slap. You know, it's interesting. Is it possible, and I'm not suggesting this, did you see her, him hit her hand and her hand hit his face, or was it his hand that squarely hit her face? No, it would be the hand that hit the face. And you saw her sunglasses fly off? They flew off, yes. Did she fall to the ground? I, I don't think she fell. At that point, there was a, a lot of commotion uh, with people in the way, but I, I don't recall her seeing her fall to the ground. Okay, Just sort of go to the side and, like, like hunch over. Okay. Now, when I heard this, I said, ain't hey, nobody did? No, you don't, you don't get to slap a white woman and, not, and, and nothing happens. Nobody filed charges, but I'm proud that Brittany did not allow her inner Karen to Karen in this situation. She took a slap and, and came back online and started twirling like this. <laughs> okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, she released a statement too that says, traumatic experiences 
are not new to me, and I have had my fair share of them. I was not prepared for what happened to me last night. I recognized an athlete in my hotel lobby. As I was heading to dinner, I later went to a restaurant at a different hotel and saw him again. I decided to approach him and congratulate him on his success. It was really loud, so I tapped him on the shoulder to get his situa- to get his attention. I am aware of the player's statement where he mentions I grabbed him from behind, but I simply tapped him on the shoulder. His security then backhanded me, sis. And in the face, without looking back, I know her little face was red, okay, (laughs) in front of a crowd, nearly knocking me down and causing my glasses off my face. Now, he didn't knock her down. Now, it wasn't, you see how she she didn't know that video was coming out. Play play the beginning of the video again, just the beginning. She didn't almost fall down. To the cat's restaurant. That's when she leaned in, sort of got her way into uh, the circle. She didn't even, she didn't even like, Go back like that. We don't see her spin many a times, and her equilibrium is off while she's spinning. She full of mucus because she wakes up like this. You know what I'm saying? That causes her to be dizzy too. If you ain't fail yet, spinning on the marble floors, okay? Them dirty marble floors because every time you you show your feet, they black on the bottom, which means you ain't mopping them floors or housekeeping ain't 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 cleaning. They ain't housekeeping. It's not housekeeping, okay? There ain't no way you just, you almost fell. See, that's half a Karen coming out right there, okay? Making it more than what it was. That fucker is not real. And we're going to believe it until the video footage comes out, okay? Um, she says, nearly knocking me down and causing my glasses off my face. I get swarmed by people all the time. In fact, that night I was swarmed by a group of at least 20 fans. My security team didn't hit any of them, Okay. This story is super embarrassing to share with the world, but it's out there already. However, I think it's important to share this story and urge people in the public eyes to set an example and treat all people with respect, okay? And then everybody's like, well, where was the husband? And he came out saying he don't believe in violence. Well, what are you there for, sir? Because your her security team, as you the husband, her security team shouldn't have even been able to, to get that close to her at all. They should have been guarding her too. You know what I'm saying? So I just don't understand what are you the husband for if you're not going to protect your wife? And then you're going to make statements like Megan's ex-party saying protect black women, but this is your first statement. You didn't want to protect her until the the verdict came out. Moving on. Pray for Brittany, y'all. Pray for Brittany. Now, this is funny. This is funny. See, we as black women, we can't make stuff so obvious. But we can't help it because we fla- We are flashy people. We cannot help it. We can't help it. When you go to Africa, you're going to see all Africa is flashy, whether they broke rich or not. They flashy. It's just a part of who we are. Okay? This is why we, that's why we are the colorful people. <laughs> God made us colorful for that reason because he knew we was going to show off. <laughs> now, this particular situation, I said to Shanti, now you... I knew it had to be a reason as to why they was wearing matching prom outfits together out on red carpets, okay? Now, Nelly, <clears throat> Nelly scores a $50 million payday by selling half of his catalog to a private equity firm. Half, which means he owns half. They gave him $50 million for the other half. I don't think Ashanti's catalog is that strong. I don't, uh, you you know what I'm saying? I I just don't, okay? So in a groundbreaking deal, rapper Nelly has just scored a massive $50 million payday by selling half of his music catalog to a private equity firm, Harborview Equity Partners. This uh, investment firm has acquired a portion of Nelly's music catalog, which includes some of his biggest hits, like Hot in Here, Dilemma. The songs nearly earned Nelly two Grammys back in 2003 and have become iconic to the music industry. Nelly expressed his desire for his music to last beyond his own career and decided to partner with Harborview to ensure the preservation of his musical legacy. This move follows a a growing trend of artists selling a portion of their catalogs with notable figures like Logic, Dr. Dre, making making significant deals recently. 
And the reported $50 million deal between Nelly and Harborview Equity Partners highlights the increasing value placed on music catalogs in the industry, okay? Now, although specific terms of the deal have not been disclosed, it is rumored to cover half of Nelly's recorded music assets showcasing the significant value placed on his catalog, okay? Now, um, I believe his decision to sell the portion of his music catalog not only provides him an impressive financial gain, but also ensures that his music will continue to reach audiences for years to come. And I remember it was like last year he was selling an unfinished house that he had had uh, for quite some time, and he couldn't finish the renovations on it. And so, you know, him, uh, you know, leveraging a deal like this is a big deal, and he's able to keep 50%. 50%. Now, this is when you're supposed to sell a catalog. You're not supposed to sell it two years after your career has started, like my sister-in-law. You don't give them the whole catalog, okay? She gave him the whole one. Now she got to be out here working, 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 just like me. Um, but this was a smart thing. Obviously, he has some good business-minded people in his corner, and he's able to keep 50% of his music, okay, and give that to his children and still live off of $50 million cash. And so did Ashanti, because Ashanti showed up like this. I'm not always there when you call. I'm not always. No. This mic on. She came up. I'm not always there when you call, but I'm always on time. And I gave you my all. Now, baby, be my, be my. I'm not always there when you call. You call <laughs> on time. I'm telling you, Ashanti got mad. I said, when they got matching outfits, there is a wedding coming. I, I, I just had to pretend like I was saying Now, congratulations to Nelly and Ashanti. That wedding is probably going to be off the coast of Italy. <laughs> All white. <laughs> She's going to be flown in on a helicopter. That is more money that she has probably made doing shows the last 20 years because her catalog is not worth half of that. And I don't think Irv Gotti gave her her catalog. <laughs> He said, you want this catalog? Oh, be a lead, bitch. I've got to say, you want this catalog? Open your lead, bitch. What'd he say? Tell, tell that. Gonna come, come by. Come get it. Tell Nelly to come get it. If he want the catalog, tell him to come see me. But Ashanti done hit a lick. I said, girl, yeah, you better put on your all gold and black in the summertime to walk the red carpet knowing the main summer clock, them, them Christmas colors. Yes, sir. She letting everybody know this is mine. It's mine. I know them when I see them on the street. Moving on. Now, everybody's up in arms about Rocky Bivens spotted out in his favorite, favorite city, the Las Vegas, okay? He was down there with a girl with a bodysuit on from the from the Beauty Depot, owned by the Asians, okay? Um, now, Check has said, well, what if that's his cousin? I said, well, given Rocky's past, he shouldn't be seen with no cousins, no nieces, <laughs> nobody within arm's length, okay? Now, everybody's like, Rocky down there, making things Rocky. I told y'all that Latasha and him are headed for a divorce, so pr pretty much he can do what he want, okay? I don't see anything wrong with this picture, and that's why he was out there so comfortable, okay? And Latasha's not gonna say anything about it at all, because right now, he's her manager, and she's just trying to make a smooth transition from him uh, so that she can begin managing her own career and hopefully, uh, you know, regain, you know, start rebuilding a relationship with her sister, okay? Rocky gonna always be Rocky. He is, okay? Done told the girl to meet him in Vegas. Obviously flew her in on spirit. Instead of her getting at least something that's Vegas appropriate, she gets a, a long sleeve bodysuit in the 100 plus degree weather. Knowing she got pit stains up under there. It is the ribbed uh, bodysuit, which means it's lines, which means elasticity is not going to last too much longer, especially after he rips it out of her. I don't know if they're at the Vasetian. It looks like they're at the Flamingo. Um, I don't know. It's a lot going on there, okay? It's a lot going on there. But like I said, uh, Latasha and him have already kind of made that known. Well, I got it. 
I put it out, okay? And so this is a free man. This is a free man, okay? It's federal. It's above us at this point. All right? Congratulations, Latasha. Rocky, you just going to keep being you, all right? Moving on. Give me my mic. <gasps> I want to say something. I want to say something. Okay? Now, I know we got a lot of high members. I am a Beyonce fan. But just because I'm a fan doesn't mean I can't critique you. Doesn't mean... I can't rate you. When people, when I go into restaurants and they ask you to fill out this card to let us know how our service was, rate us one through five or one through 10 on how good the food was and everything like that, I'm going to leave an honest review. But I feel like we live in a society where, you know, we've gotten away from competition and, and we don't understand how Competition ensures adequate, um, you know, growth. Growing as a company, growing as people. Whatever happened to the customer is always right. If I spend my money with you, I don't, I don't care if you gave me a free card to come get a chicken biscuit at Chick-fil-A. I'm still a customer. I am in your establishment. I am eating your food, and I have the power to leave a Google review to let you know if that biscuit was soggy, if it was salty, if the chicken wasn't done, I have the right to speak my mind. And when you are charging that much money, and I'm a fan, and I voice a concern, I have a problem with that because why am I getting told off death threats? Because I'm leaving a Yelp review and a Google review on how you conducting your business. It ain't like I went down there to the to the to the uh, uh, to the BB the Better Business Bureau. Now, now that's federal. I just left three stars on Google. And when I leave three stars on Google, instead of you saying, ma'am, I understand, why is you sending your mammy over down to my house to attempt to gather me? Put her on the Why are you sending this witch to my door? Yes, yeah, she Creole. Yes, yeah, she probably a witch. But my mother-in-law from Africa. Don't play. Don't play. She in Mecca right now. Just sent me videos from Mecca on her pilgrimage. And God is a lot stronger than that darkness y'all got going on down there. Remember, God was a fan of the devil. But whatever happened to the customer is always right. Now, I know she pulling up to defend her grandbaby, as she should. As she should. But I didn't say anything bad about her grandbaby. I didn't. I just, I, I said Blue Ivy is beautiful. She has her life set up, but I feel that in this society that we live in, y'all giving awards to everybody. Whatever happened to, you know how, you know what made me try to strive to be better? You know why I'm here now? It's because they never gave me an award when I was in school because I didn't do nothing. I was in the gym all day talking, telling jokes, telling everybody business at school. I had gym eight periods a day. First, second, third, fourth. People was like, how do you have period all day? Why the coaches ain't said nothing? And then when it came time for the awards assembly, right, I ain't getting no award. I got no attendance award, not nothing. I said, why do you ain't got no best, the funniest person? So I got the funny person 
you know, in the yearbook. When they put me there uh, in the ninth grade, you know, three, three, three times, three years in a row. But I feel like just because, you know, her mom is who she is and her grandma is who she is and her dad is who she is, they just giving her an award. And yeah, we want to cheer the kids on. It's just like, you know, you have a car party and your kids are asleep and you wake them up out of, the, uh, out, out of the bed and tell them to come dance for your friends and stuff and they be sleep, crust all in their eye, white shit around their mouth, but they dancing because y'all drunk and y'all ain't got no entertainment. That's what I feel is going on. And when I voice the concern as a patron, because I am a fan, you want to pull up like you're going to check me. Who going to check me, boo? Who gonna check me? You in my house. I left a Google review. Fix it. Or, 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 or we ain't got nothing else to talk about. There's other fan bases I can join. Now, when Miss Tina Knowles did this here, I said, What 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 I do, Miss Tina? Miss Tina follow me. I said, what I do, Miss Tina? What did I do? Literally, she pulled up. I don't know if it was the energy, because she knew that I was coming to say something. Because I saw the video of her saying when people try to break my soul or diss me or when there's haters. Why do we always got to be haters? Why we can't just be like, yo, fix this? Why does it always have to be hating? We can't complain. You're in the business of service. Beyonce's in the She's on business. I'm not, I'm not uh, uh, judging Beyonce Knowles Carter. I'm judging Beyonce the brand and Blue Ivy the trademark. But you're not a trademark, Ms. Knowles. The family name, what Matthew has done to the Knowles name. Now, put that screenshot back up because I wanted to notice something. Because literally, I, I was prepared to drag you more. Because I felt like whatever happened to the customer is always right. And as a customer, when, when I go into them air businesses and I tell them they chicken ain't done in the middle and they try to tell me it's done, that's how they cook their chicken. I said, well, I'm black. This is not how I eat my chicken. And then I throw the styrofoam box over the counter. You better not throw it back. You better pick it up and go get me some done chicken. But instead, you want to pull up and call me a hater. Or maybe you're here because you enjoy the wine, Miss Knowles. But I'm trying to figure out, because I went scrolling through you. Because I was like, you, Miss Knowles, you are lucky. You lucky I wasn't around when Matthew Knowles was outside, outside. The way this man was outside with dark-skinned chicks like me and gave Beyonce her first dark-skinned sister that she don't claim, child. You are lucky that I wasn't around. I was just getting my blow started at the time. You missed that train. I missed that train. I missed that train. And like I said, you can go and ball chicken bones. My mother-in-law is in Mecca right now doing the pilgrimage. And I will have her drop your name on a stone. But I'm just trying to figure out, like, what are you coming to check? Who gonna check me? Because I'm trying to figure out, like, the way Matthew dogged you out. I just, I, I, I had questions. Because I don't understand how a man like that, y'all don't ever claim him. He's never on the tours anymore. If he got to buy his own tickets to come. He can't sit stage side. Y'all got him way up back there. He ain't even down there with Jay-Z and Megan Thee Stallion. Y'all got him over there with his dark-skinned wife. Y'all mad that the man said the only reason Beyonce is famous is because she likes skin? But he prefers the black community. And he is not going to disown his black babies that look like me. You wearing all that black, Miss Knowles. Put it back up. But Mr. Matthew didn't think it was black enough. And what I was going to say when I was going to drag you 
and that paper mache makeup you got going on. Y'all remember paper mache? Flour, water, newspapers. You put it up, you can build a face, put some red lipstick on it, put a wig on it. That's Miss Knowles. And the only reason I'm calling her Miss Knowles, go back to her profile. Because since y'all think nobody can drag them because they're the royal family, that dress is not giving royalty, is because I'm trying to figure out how you got a nice chocolate, handsome husband. And when people Google you, the first name that comes up is Tina Knowles. Yeah, she got Lawson up there in the back, but when you come to the page, you don't see that. I just happened to screenshot that so you can see. Why is your name still Tina Knowles? Don't, 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 Try to tell me it's a household name. Not the way Matthew ran it down there to the projects. With them dark skin, alleged prostitutes that he impregnated. And you hid the babies from the public the same way Beyonce is hiding Jay-Z's alleged babies. Don't play with me. Beyonce gonna look just like you. She moving just like you. And we still trying to figure out who that little girl was that was sitting beside Blue that looked like she was older than Blue with Jay-Z on the bench and they would eat ice cream. Who is that little girl? Did you teach her to hide side babies, allegedly? Who is she? Now, all I'm going to say, Ms. Knowles, is I respect you, because I respect my elders. But what you're not going to do is try to argue with a customer. Like I said, ain't nobody said nothing about that little girl. She is a beautiful little girl. Her life is set up. She's very privileged. But we're not going to like and enjoy everything. I know y'all do, because she is an heir to a billion-dollar billion empire. It's all over her. And she's shitting on us. We know that her shit is made of diamonds. But we don't have to agree with everything. Same reason your ex-husband didn't agree with everything you did. But I'm just trying to figure out why is Mr. Lawson's name not on this profile? It should say Tina knows Lawson. Why is it that y'all done pushed Matthew to the side, but you want to keep the last name? That last name, last time I checked, is worth nothing because he down here doing speeches for a check. But Lawson ain't embarrassed you. Lawson ain't got no side babies on you. You see how the usually the women just, did, women, just, they just love a nigga to just dog them out. They're going to give them respect anyway. And she can say, oh, my kids, now your kids are married. Your grandchildren, everybody trying to hold on to that name. If you're going to keep Knowles, bring in, bring in your stepchildren. Bring in the stepchildren that he had. Bring them in. Let them be a Knowles, too, if that's something that you're trying to protect. But until then, Ms. Knowles, listen, like I said, I respect you, and I respect my elders. And I'm an elder myself. I'm over 40 now because technically I could be a grandmama, too, if I would have had my daughter at 16. We can get this same energy, and I hope that you pulled up as a wino. Stop throwing shade at me. Stop trying to argue with the customers, because customers will always give you this smoke. And with that being said, now I got to go. And next time, you better send your daughter. And she ain't got a problem with me. We the same age. Same age, okay? Now, thank y'all so much for watching. <laughs> we are now gonna head over to TashaKLive.com. Uh, let's do 9:30. Yeah, 9:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't forget to get your tickets. We are in Miami. <laughs> Oh, October 20th, all right, this year. Let's hope Jay-Z don't shut it down, Lord Jesus. <laughs> I'll call somebody, cancel, cancel everything. I just said, I just want to be able to express my opinion of things. And, you know, it's just all love. It's wine gossip comedy over here. That's all. We just, we're just telling jokes. That's it. That's it. That's it.
That's it. I tell jokes on myself. I drag myself. Lord knows I see Sheck out here in these streets and y'all bring me receipts. He going to be up here too. He going to be up here too. Nah, nobody's off limits. But the children. If they ain't public figures. But if your child a public figure, I got something to say. <laughs> Please don't forget, all right, if you want to join our show that's going to be going down at 930, okay, Eastern Standard Time, on TashaKLive.com, subscribe via TashaKLive.com, and then you can join the live chat that we'll have going on there. Thank you so much. I love y'all. Happy every Friday. Share, like, subscribe, and I'll see y'all in 30 minutes. Jasmine, take them home with that R. Kelly disc. Let's go! Robert, it's time to go. It's just us against the world, you know that, right? <clears throat> and I, I need y'all to prove your loyalty to me. Everybody has left me, took my money, and now y'all all I got. <clears throat> and so I'm gonna need you to prove your loyalty to me. Will you prove your loyalty to me? Yeah? Okay. <clears throat> when you eat this, you belong to me. Skit slide this blood.
plus a lot more wine spilled live with me and Wine with Tasha K on stage in Miami on October 20th, 2023 at 8 p.m. I better see the winos at the Flamingo Bar Theater. Grab your tickets, doors open at 6.30 p.m. and seats are first come, first served within your ticket tier. And if you think I cut up on this here internet, you ain't ready for the shit that's about to go down live on stage. Scan the QR code or get your tickets using the link below. The winos are toasting up in Miami. Purchase now.